Hi everybody, my name is Ignacio Medel and in this lesson we are going to talk about teaching history and the use of the internet. We begin with a Jose Saramago's quote, history doesn't make judgment, those who make judgment are the men of each era. That's right, we are the human beings who judge our present and our past. Because of that we have the mean of our time. It doesn't seem to make much sense for a student of history in the 21st century to use only, uh, only the same tools as a colleague of his in the 19th or 20th century. Therefore, we advocate the inclusion of audiovisual media, but also the invention that revolutionated the past century and that is indispensable in the 21st century, internet. But it is really feasible to introduce the internet as a resource for teaching history? Without understanding the value of libraries and textbooks, it does not make sense for 21st century teachers to avoid the eruption of informatics and especially the use of the internet in their educational practice. What role can the internet play in teaching history in secondary school? It is a motivating tool for the student, which is especially interesting at this stage of education. Allows a better distribution of the schedules. The teacher, being no longer the only source of information in the classroom, can spend more time tracking the student's learning process. And the internet can ease the understanding of concepts, simulate historical heroes, etc. But we must be able, be aware of the dangers that can uh, arise from the use of the internet in the classroom. Therefore, the following points should be considered. It must be included in a natural way within the classroom setting so that the student uh, perceive it as a tool as valid as those traditional use, bibliography, etc., without overvaluing it and stating that it isn't the only uh, mean of learning history, nor is everything. Second, the amount of accessible information is the largest ever and it is necessary to discriminate and learn how to make that. For this, the teacher's work will be essential. And finally, the ease of finding information on the internet makes the cognitive process of analysis and research replaced by copy-paste. What uses can we give to the internet in education and particularly in the teaching history? As a virtual library, with a big amount of references, dictionary, digital magazines, blog, databases, etc. Access to historical archives on the internet, viewing, reproduction and downloading documents as a place to search information. Internet as a search tool. Currently, search engines are classified into two kinds, search engines and directories. On the one hand, we have indexes and search engines. Indexes have the advantage uh, over search engines that provides more specific information about we are, what we are looking for. That is, we must shift and eliminate less information. Meanwhile, the more search engines we use currently look for keywords. The best known case is Google. Also, we have robots and multi-searchers, second generation tools, installed on our computers as tool. Its job is to perform the exploration of results in several search tools at a time, showing the results, once only, in an orderly manner depending on their relevance. How shall we look? We need to clearly define what we are looking for through keywords. They can be words, phrases or any combination of single words and phrases. Finding quotes using quotation marks is useful for searching for specific names or concepts. It is preferable to use only lowercase and uncut. Use the advanced search option to find more precise results. Google, for example, can uh, already search by document type, uh, delimit the search to the pages of a certain web or exclude pages among other possibilities. Is the internet a good teaching aid? We respond positively. Here are some examples in this regard. Telematic tutoring with students. Through email and video conferencing, teachers can have direct contact with the students. 
the students can access didactic materials online, programs, didactic guides, manual, etc. The teacher develops his web page with the program of the subject, resources, recommend bibliography, etc. Learning among equals. Debates among students, collaborative projects. Students can carry out joint activities with certain in other places, in their own country or abroad. And finally, distance master classes, master classes. Today, through video conference, we can attend a master class, live or deferred, beyond the place where the teachers and the students are located. The possibilities and resources uh, in the internet currently shows are, are huge. Here are some examples of website directories that have in common their quality, their historical theme and their main language, English. First example is Best History website. It's a comply uh, many links sort by historical periods and topics and commented and rated. It is especially interesting for the study of the history of the uh, 20th century in relation to the First uh, World War, the Russian Revolution and the Cold War. Next, History Website Directory, Spartacus Educational. Spartacus is one of the um, leading websites in Europe. It presents a vast directory of commented links, web classified in a dou double way, by its team and according to the age of the students to which they are directed. A school history. In its section of links, it collects more than 1,000 websites commented and classified. Undoubtedly, one of the most complete web for teaching history. Teachers Oz Kingdom of History. In this website, we are offered a large amount of resources ordered by theme on world history, US history, etc. Also for its quality and quantity of material present and available, we recommend the visit and the use of the resource of the following web page. BBC History. The British public television website provides us with a wealth of quality resources organized thematically. It presents pages uh, really interesting as dedicated to the First World War. PBS Learning Media. It's a sectional resource bank for teachers of history and social science. It presents program, uh, programming topics and an interesting selection of links to be able to work with activities, evaluation, etc. Finally, we also advocate the use in the classroom of the WebQuest. The WebQuest is a learning method that has the following characteristic. First, it is a target investigation where the information used is prioritized in the, on the internet. The teacher provides a structure and guides the search for information on the internet, uh, select good, good websites and mark clear and realistic activities. The objective of working with a web quest is to enhance the critical spirit of the student who will be obliged to discriminate sources. It is a mainly uh, cooperative learning method where the students must learn to work in group. And finally, promotes the mastery of internet browsing as well as the techniques that will allow the development of own material to be uploaded to the network. The steps of a complete web quest, a little guide that can be modified according to the teacher and the, student, the students. First, introduction. We must explain to the student the characteristics uh, of the task to be performed and motivated in an attractive way the work he is going to carry out. Second step, task. The description of what should be done in the research work. It is advisable, not obligatory, that the task uh, carried out can finally be exposed on the internet or at least that they are uh, aided by some ICT tool, PowerPoint, Prezi, etc. And third, process. In a detailed way, we must describe the steps to carry out the work, assigning uh, to a student, choosing the technological means to use, etc. Continuous dialogue, dialogue between the students and teacher is important. About the resources, Selection of the resources that we are going to use in internet according to the characteristic of the group and its age. 
the older you are, the more freedom you can choose from sources. A good selection of resources is essential to achieve the success of a web quest. About the evaluation, it is essential that the student knows, knows from the beginning how it will be evaluated. And finally, the conclusion. We must arrive at conclusions that allow the debate and leave open future research also through other web quests. There is the possibility that the web quest ends with a series of reflection and advice by the teacher. So, a good web quest should present the student, uh, students with a complete resource search, show a concise and developed description of the tasks to be performed by students. An example of web quest is the web quest of Jan Monet's life and European history. This web quest intends to teach the history of European integration and the student must seek connections between the life and deeds of Jean Monnet and the great events of the 20th century. Thank you for your attention.